Energy Metabolism, Part 6 The Citric Acid Cycle The citric acid cycle is an essential metabolic pathway occurring in the mitochondrial matrix of aerobically active cells. Its intermediates serve as substrates for various anabolic processes in the cell. In energy metabolism, the main function of the citric acid cycle is to generate reducing equivalents that can be converted to ATP in the electron transport chain. For this purpose, substrates such as acetyl-CoA, oxaloacetate, succinyl-CoA, fumarate, and malate are broken down into carbon dioxide. These molecules are formed especially during aerobic glycolysis and beta-oxidation, but also during amino acid degradation. The citric acid cycle occurs in eight steps. We'll now introduce them to you in detail. By clicking on Dieter's red molecule, you can take a look at or hide the molecular structures at any time. In the first step of the citric acid cycle, an acetyl group is transferred to oxaloacetate, cleaving its coenzyme A part hydrolytically. This produces citrate, giving its name to the metabolic pathway. The enzyme of this first reaction is accordingly called citrate synthase. Oxaloacetate serves as a carrier molecule for the acetyl unit. This is why the citric acid cycle can be seen as being split into two parts. In the first part, two carbon dioxide molecules are split off. In the second part, the carrier molecule is regenerated. Theoretically, all three acid groups of citrate could be cleaved off as carbon dioxide, but since their cleavage is energetically unfavorable, citrate is initially converted into isocitrate in the second step. The reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme aconitase. Because isocitrate isn't as stable as citrate, there's much more citrate than isocitrate in the reaction equilibrium despite enzymatic catalysis. What keeps the citric acid cycle running at this point is the consumption of isocitrate in the third reaction, which leads to its continuous production. While citrate is a tertiary alcohol, isocitrate is a secondary alcohol. It can be oxidized to a ketone, forming alpha-ketoglutarate in the third step of the citric acid cycle. The released electrons and protons are transferred to NAD+. The reducing equivalent NADH and H+, is formed, which is later used to make ATP in the electron transport chain. Let's take a note of it in our energy balance of the citric acid cycle. Through oxidation of the alcohol group of isocitrate, the molecule releases the adjacent central carboxylic acid group as carbon dioxide. The oxidative decarboxylation is catalyzed by the enzyme isocitrate dehydrogenase. The second carbon dioxide is immediately cleaved in the next step of the citric acid cycle. Alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase transfers coenzyme A to the remaining succinyl group to form succinyl-CoA. The electrons and protons released during the reaction reduce NAD plus to NADH and H plus, so we can add another reducing equivalent to the energy balance. By the way, the carbon atoms of both carbon dioxide molecules originate from the oxaloacetate part of the molecule, not from the acetyl part. This means that the carbon atoms of any new acetyl group pass through the citric acid cycle more than once before leaving as carbon dioxide. To keep things simple, acetyl-CoA is overall still considered to be split into two carbon dioxide molecules. With the formation of succinyl-CoA, the first task of the citric acid cycle is complete cleavage of acetyl-CoA to carbon dioxide. The following four reaction steps aim to regenerate the carrier molecule oxaloacetate, enabling the citric acid cycle to repeat continuously. The initial step to regenerate oxaloacetate involves the release of coenzyme A by succinyl-CoA synthetase, yielding succinate. The cleavage of the thioester bond releases energy, which is used for GTP production. GTP can be used for substrate-level phosphorylation. In this sense, ATP and GTP are both energy carriers. The only difference in their molecular structure lies in the nitrogenous base, which is adenine for ATP and guanine for GTP. Given that phosphate exchange occurs easily between GTP and ATP, GTP can be treated in the same manner as ATP, so we'll add it to our energy balance. If we compare succinate with the target molecule oxaloacetate, we notice that the only difference is an additional ketone group in oxaloacetate. The ketone group is in the beta position to one of the two carboxylic acid groups. 
Does this give you an idea of how succinate can be converted to oxaloacetate? Conversion occurs analogous to the reaction strategy of beta-oxidation. Therefore, reaction step 6 leads to the formation of fumarate, which has a double bond. The reaction is catalyzed by succinate dehydrogenase. It transfers the electrons and protons released during the reaction to FAD and hereby to a protein of the electron transport chain. We don't want to go into too much detail now, but do take note of the enzyme succinate dehydrogenase. It's also termed complex 2 of the electron transport chain, which we'll look at further in the next episode. Let's add FADH2 to the energy balance. In the seventh step of the citric acid cycle, the double bond of fumarate is hydrated by fumarase. As a result, a molecule with an additional alcohol group is formed, malate. This alcohol group is oxidized by malate dehydrogenase to a ketone during the last reaction of the citric acid cycle. With that, oxaloacetate is recovered, closing the cycle. The two electrons and two protons released during the final oxidation are again used to generate NADH and H+, which will also add to the energy balance. Overall, each molecule of acetyl-CoA entering the citric acid cycle yields a total of 3 NADH and H+, 1 GTP, and 1 FADH2. This corresponds to a gain of about 10 molecules of ATP. There's no overall regulation of the citric acid cycle by hormones or key enzymes. However, some individual reactions are regulated. Let's briefly look at the most important mechanisms. Large amounts of acetyl-CoA rapidly lead to the accumulation of citrate. So it's reasonable that excess citrate inhibits citrate synthase activity in accordance with classical product inhibition. Furthermore, citrate inhibits glycolysis, which is one of the primary suppliers of acetyl-CoA. Isocitrate dehydrogenase can be inhibited by NADH and H+, as well as by ATP. Both signal that the cell is sufficiently supplied with energy. Also, alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase activity is inhibited by its reaction products NADH and H+, and succinyl-CoA. By the way, both decarboxylation reactions can also be activated by calcium ions. As a transmitter, Free calcium initiates many energy-consuming processes in the cell. Therefore, it makes sense that it simultaneously triggers the cellular energy supply. Succinate dehydrogenase is finally inhibited by excess fumarate. As already discussed for glycolysis and beta-oxidation, pathological changes of central metabolic pathways are rare. This also applies to the citric acid cycle. Defects of the enzymes involved aren't really clinically relevant, in contrast to extreme metabolic states that affect the citric acid cycle on a regulatory level. Such metabolic states can be prompted by, for example, the intake of significant amounts of alcohol. Alcohol degradation increases the ratio of reduced reducing equivalents. This leads to a relative excess of NADH and H+. The cell interprets this as a sign of a sufficient energy supply. The citric acid cycle is consequently inhibited leading to the accumulation of acetyl-CoA. Instead, acetyl-CoA is then used for fatty acid synthesis or ketogenesis. This is one explanation behind why regular alcohol consumption leads to weight gain. Another special metabolic condition occurs when intracellular glucose concentrations decrease in diabetics. Because this results in increased gluconeogenesis, it lowers the concentration of oxaloacetate, which is a building block used in gluconeogenesis. Without enough oxaloacetate carrier molecules, however, the citric acid cycle comes to a standstill, again leading to the accumulation of acetyl-CoA. This serves to increase fatty acid and ketone body production. Extremely high levels of ketone bodies lead to diabetic ketoacidosis. We'll delve deeper into ketogenesis in episode 12 of this course. Let's finish off by summarizing the most important points of the citric acid cycle. The citric acid cycle is a central metabolic pathway that occurs in the mitochondrial matrix. Cleavage of the C2 unit of acetyl-CoA into two molecules of carbon dioxide occurs through oxidative decarboxylation in the first four reaction steps of the citric acid cycle. The remaining four reaction steps are required to regenerate the carrier molecule oxaloacetate from succinate by a reaction path similar to beta-oxidation. The energy balance of the citric acid cycle for each molecule of acetyl-CoA is 3 NADH and H+, 1 GTP, and 1 FADH2. 
Altogether, this corresponds to about 10 molecules of ATP. Regulation of the citric acid cycle occurs at an individual reaction level. It follows general principles according to which a sufficient amount of substrates activates the metabolic process. A surplus of products, especially those signaling excess energy, inhibits the metabolism. Before we move on to the next episode in the electron transport chain, we've prepared a quick quiz for you.